So current is one of the ways that we can measure the amount of electricity that's flowing. And when I think about what is current, it's useful to think about a hose here. So I've got a hose here which carries water. And of course we could easily measure how much water is traveling through the hose by looking at a point in the hose and saying, well, how much water is going past this point every second? And we could measure it in something like, you know, something like liters per second. So water would be a whole bunch of waters traveling on the hose. Um, and we could just check out a point and go, well, there's, you know, one liter of water going past this point per second. And that would be very easy. So current's not actually very dissimilar to that. So over here I have a wire and electricity. So let's draw some electrons maybe. So electricity, electrons are all flowing along this wire. So what we can actually do is we can measure little packets of electricity as they flow along. So it's the flow of these charged particles. Um, and the, the way we basically measure them is we measure them in something called a coulomb and we do it per second. So instead of litres per second for water, it's coulombs per second. And a coulomb is like, it's a bunch of charge. So how, mu how many bunches of charge travel per second? Um, and that is either measured in coulombs per second, or really that's, that's really always measured in amperes or amps. So we measure the flow of current, so how much charge is flying around a circuit. We measure that in amperes or amps, and the symbol for current is, uh, the symbol for current is I. Interestingly enough, the symbol for amperes or amps is the letter A. So how much current is there? You would say there might be, there might be one amp of current. And that is how much of the charge is flowing along the wire at any particular time. Now voltage is also a, um, a great way to measure how much electrical energy is traveling around a circuit. So again, let's have a look here at this uh, water pipe I've got here. So you can see that if I lift the, the one end of the pipe off the ground and then I put some water in here, when I lift it up, it's given that water what's called gravitational potential energy. So it's given it a bit of energy by lifting it off the ground and that energy will then enable it to flow down the pipe to the ground. As it flows down the pipe, it will you know, get rid of that energy and then it will be at the bottom of the pipe. So basically, you know, if I lift the, lift the pipe further up, I give it more gravitational potential energy. So looking over here again to our electric circuit, this is not very dissimilar. What a battery does is it provides electrical potential energy. So it provides, you know, the power for the charged particles, you know, to provide, to do their work. So the water is going downhill, it's, you know, doing some work. Uh, the battery provides the, the, you know, the power, the electrical potential energy for the charged particles when they flow around. And the more, the more power the voltage gives, the, you know, the more work the um, charged particles can do. So we'll have a, you know, a bit of a look at that, uh, and we'll, we'll do that by maybe putting a bigger battery on both of these things. So if we put a bigger battery over here on the water pipe, you can see that the water pipe's now way higher up on the ground. And if again, if I put some water up here, it'll now have more gravitational potential energy, and so it will be able to travel further down this pipe all the way to the bottom. So it will be able to do more work. It'll be able to travel further down because the battery lifted it further up. It's quite simple. Further up means you travel further down uh, and you, you, know, you get rid of more energy all on the way down. Well, having a bigger battery does exactly the same thing. It gives the charged particles more energy so that when they travel around the circuit, again, a circuit has to go from one end of the battery to the other. When the particles travel around the circuit, they're able to do more work. So they're able to maybe make a light globe glow brighter when they when those particles have a higher voltage. So a voltage is um, it's a measure of the electrical potential energy. So how much energy the charged particles have in an electric uh, circuit. Now resistance is another way to measure what's happening in an, in an electric circuit. And again I'll go back to my example of the water through the pipe. So here I've got, it's quite a big pipe. Here I've got a big pipe and you can see that you know I could get a whole, this great drawing here, I get a whole bunch of water traveling through this pipe because it's such a big, big fat pipe. Now, if I increase the resistance to the water, so how can I make less water travel uh, along, you know, from this point to, you know, to this point? Well, what I would do is I get a little of pipe. So now, because the pipe's little, I just, you just can't fit as much water through that pipe at one time. 
Um, so a smaller amount of water will now be able to travel through that pipe. Um, so that's pretty simple when you think about it in terms of the amount of water going. You, you increase or you decrease the pipe, that increases the resistance to the flow of water, and so less water flows through. Well, electrical circuits, they're not really that different. So again, here I've got a wire here, and I can imagine I've got um, you know, charged particles traveling along the wire, and they could travel, you know, there'd be a certain number of charged particles which could travel along this wire. And what I can do here with this, um, with this wire is simply add in something called a resistor. So this here is a picture of a resistor, and this basically stops the flow of charged particles. So it decreases the flow, and that means that, you know, less charged particles, so I don't know how many I've got up here, let's say I've got five or six, um, less charged particles are able to flow through this resistor than they would through the normal wire. So I've increased the resistance of the wire. And if I'm measuring resistance, I actually do that using a unit called ohms. And this funny little symbol here, omega, that is the symbol for ohms. So resistance has a symbol R, but I measure it in ohms with the symbol, that's a symbol for ohms, it's uh, the Greek letter, letter omega. And so that's uh, all about uh, resistance.